As the low-carb movement has exploded in popularity, a new phenomenon has been rising. Many who adopted the diet have seen their LDL cholesterol rise substantially. We call these folks hyper-responders. Existing guidelines consider LDL cholesterol a serious marker for cardiovascular risk, which is why it is often called the bad cholesterol. However, many of these same low-carbers see a rise in their HDL cholesterol, which is often called the good cholesterol. Also, they typically see a drop in their triglycerides, a measure of fat in the blood. Higher HDL and lower triglycerides are both associated with lower cardiovascular risk. Given how common this is for the diet, we often call these three together the low-carb lipid triad. High LDL, high HDL, low triglycerides. As it happens, many who have the biggest extremes of this triad are generally lean and often fit. We call these lean mass hyperresponders. At Cholesterol Code, we're focused a lot on how this could make sense in terms of energy management when one is powered by fat. You can find out more at cholesterolcode.com slash model. But the biggest question we have is one of risk. Is this triad healthy or dangerous? Thus far, the few studies that do stratify for the lipid triad show a low risk for cardiovascular disease. A recent paper looked at 3,590 men and women from the Framingham Heart Study and found the odds ratio was nearly identical between the low and high LDL groups where HDL was high and triglycerides low. Another paper with nearly 3,000 from the Copenhagen Male Study stratified between those with an LDL of 170 and below versus those above 170 and found their risk was nearly identical when matching high HDL and low triglycerides. To be sure, this is uncharted territory as it relates to this triad being produced by a particular diet. But as it happens, many of these lean mass hyperresponders are pretty determined to remain in this lifestyle and aren't taking any steps to lower their cholesterol, which means they could provide unique data we've never had before. To date, no study has ever had a group of people with high LDL cholesterol combined with every other cardiovascular risk marker at optimal levels, such as low blood pressure, fasting insulin, waist to hip ratio, and hemoglobin A1c to name just a few. Yet this is very common among lean mass hyperresponders. And to give you some perspective, while guidelines typically advise one to keep their LDL below 100 mg per deciliter, lean mass hyperresponders have their levels in the 200s, with some even in the 300s, 400s, and higher. So, are they at risk? Well, that's where you come in. We're currently raising money to gather data on these folks, not just with their blood work, but sophisticated measurements such as CT angiogram, flow-mediated dilatation, and carotid intima media thickness, to name just a few. We want to gather this data now and again in five years to see if these metrics show any changes in vascular function or markers for risk when compared to a normal, healthy population. The only other group that naturally has levels of LDL this high are those with the genetic disease known as familial hypercholesterolemia, or FH. These same tests on those who have FH tend to show a rapid progression of atherosclerosis in a short span of time, but will lean mass hyperresponders show the same outcomes? And so far, current data from many of these people has looked surprisingly positive overall, but it is still anecdotal. We need stronger data for greater certainty. My name is Dave Feldman, and I hypothesize that at a population level, this group will surprise us with unremarkable or even lower rates of cardiovascular disease than expected. I'm teaming up with great people like Dr. Spencer Nadalski, who hypothesizes the opposite, that we will indeed see rapid progression. Either way, we want the data to speak for itself, and you can help us get there. Please consider contributing to the Lean Mass Hyperresponder Measurement Project at citizensciencefoundation.org. And please share this video and help spread the word about this groundbreaking project to help us make it a reality. It's hard to emphasize just how powerful this data would be if indeed this group did not see a rapid change in these diagnostics at a population level, given just how high their LDL cholesterol is. It wouldn't just matter to them, it would matter to the low carb movement and certainly the lipid hypothesis itself. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support.